Welcome back to the Brain Tumor Channel. All brain tumors, all the time. Today we're talking pituitary adenomas. I, I thought you said this wasn't going to be the Brain Tumor Channel. Did I say that? This is not going to become the Brain Tumor Channel. This is not going to become the Brain Tumor Channel. Esto no va a convertirse en el canal de tumor cerebral. I guess I did say that. Sorry, guys. We are Sean and Christy of Long Long Honeymoon. This is not the Brain Tumor Channel, but today we are discussing health insurance and travel, especially RV travel. In this video, we're going to give you at least four important tips. And if you'll allow me, I'm gonna do a Mr. Rogers here and change hats. Tip number one, make sure that your health insurance covers you outside your home state. You probably need to telephone your health insurance company. For us, for example, we use Blue Cross Blue Shield and they're in all 50 states, so we have coverage in all 50 states. With that said, if your insurance covers you outside of your home state, make sure you know how to find out which providers are in your insurance company's network. So Blue Cross Blue Shield would cover us no matter who we went to, but our coverage would be better if we went to a Blue Cross and Blue Shield provider. So we would basically have a lower deductible, a lower percentage of payment that we're responsible for if we go to a Blue Cross Blue Shield provider versus somebody that is not a Blue Cross Blue Shield provider. When Sean fell and broke his foot and we were in California. The problem is the bone is not only split apart, it's at a 26 degree angle and uh, there's a gap uh, or displacement of seven millimeters. So I think what we're going to do is have surgery to press the bone back together and screw it in tight. I basically just called the number on the back of our insurance card and said, hey, this is where we are. Where can we go to a hospital? And they gave me a list of like five different hospitals to choose from. If you have a computer nearby, you can also usually go to the website of your insurance company, type in the zip code of where you are, and they'll give you a list of doctors and hospitals, et cetera, that are in the network that you're looking for. We're in Sydney, Nebraska at the hospital. I have sprained my ankle in Moldova, dislocated my kneecap in New York, I had chicken pox in Czechoslovakia, and now a tetanus shot yeah. in Nebraska. It's pretty easy if your insurance does cover you outside of your home state to find people that provide for you if you're using a large provider. So Blue Cross and Blue Shield is one of the largest providers in the country. Aetna, United Healthcare, those are some other large ones that you probably won't have a hard time finding um, providers for. If you have a smaller you know, company that you work with, eh, I don't know, you'll have to do some research on that. The other big question we get a lot is, what about my prescriptions? How do I get my prescriptions on the road? Well, I would recommend if you are planning on being gone for a long period of time and you don't want to worry about it, if, if your insurance provider will allow you to get 90 day supplies of your prescriptions, that will make things easier just because you'll have to worry about it less, especially if you're going to go into Canada or something and you don't want to have to worry about that. Just get yourself a 90 day supply before you leave the US. Now, if you're somebody that you either can't get a 90 day supply or you don't wanna worry about that, you just wanna pick them up when you need them. If you use a national chain like CVS or Walgreens or Walmart to get your prescriptions, it's pretty easy to pick up your prescription no matter where you go. We use Walgreens, our insurance requires that we use Walgreens. And so I basically call the local Walgreens wherever we are say we're in California. I call that Walgreens, I say, hi, I'm on vacation. I need a refill of my prescription. I use the Walgreens in Birmingham, Alabama. Here's my name, here's my date of birth. This is the prescription number that I want refilled. And they say, okay, great, we can pull it up in the system and we'll fill it for you here. No worries, don't have to worry about giving them my insurance information, nothing like that, they've got it in their system. If you are somewhere where there is not a chain that you usually participate with. For instance, Jackson Hole, Wyoming does not have a Walgreens. I 
go on to the Blue Cross Blue Shield website, I look up participating pharmacies and put in the zip code and it tells me these are your choices in Jackson. So I actually go to the Albertsons grocery store in Jackson if I need a refill for something. I call the Albertsons, I tell them again my name, my date of birth, what prescription I'm wanting refilled, and I give them the phone number for my home pharmacy that has this prescription on file. They will call that pharmacy directly and get all the information and fill the prescription for you. So it's really not as big a deal as I think a lot of people think it might be. It's really just a phone call. Sometimes they'll say, oh, we don't carry that specific generic of your medicine. We're going to give you a different one instead. It's the same thing. It's just a different generic. If you haven't noticed, my wife is the health insurance <laughs> expert. I used to work for a pharmaceutical company in a previous life. And so I dealt a lot with you know, insurance questions and just became really familiar with insurance back in the day. Okay. One thing to remember is if you do use a pharmacy that is not your normal chain, like for instance, when I go to the Albertsons in Jackson Hole, the next time I get my prescription filled, once we've left Jackson Hole and I'm going to a Walgreens, I have to tell that Walgreens, hey, the last time I got this prescription filled, it was at an Albertsons in Wyoming. And they have to call that Albertsons in Wyoming and get the prescription transferred back into the Walgreens system. Just hold on to whatever bottle or you know, packet or whatever your prescription comes in. So you'll have the pharmacy name and phone number. So you'll re be able to remember where you got that prescription filled the last time. So you can tell your regular pharmacy who to call to get it transferred back. All right, so here we are in the Sahara Desert. It is uh, morning, right about 6.20 a.m. People have been clapping their hands outside, which I believe is our wake up call. This is the interior of our Berber tent. Berber being the name of the people who live this lifestyle in the desert or have traditionally. So yeah, it was, it did the job. It actually, uh, it's incredibly dark during the day in here. So you could come in here in the middle of the day and it'd be pitch black dark, I give them that. Next. Suppose you're traveling out of the country, and for those of you who, for example, want to take your RV to Alaska, there's that uh, country in between the lower 48 <laughs> and Alaska you're going to be traveling through. Yes, I'm talking about Canada. And uh, some of you may want to take your RV down to Mexico. Well, quite often, your insurance policy will not cover you out of the country mm -hmm. unless you purchase uh, basically a rider or a little bit of extra insurance on top. I mean, it's called travel medical insurance. And you can really customize what you purchase. I mean, for example, a Blue Cross Blue Shield, you can say, I'm going to be gone for three months, and so I need coverage for that three months. Or you could say, I'm going on a round-the-world trip, and I'm going to be gone for a year. Right. And you can get coverage for that full year. You can even get coverage for a week. I think five days is the shortest amount of coverage that they'll give you. And this is with the Blue Cross Blue Shield. It's called Geo Blue, and it's their international medicine policy or what have you. There are other companies out there, and you can actually go to the State Department website and where they have all the information on travel abroad. They have a list of companies that do offer medical insurance for overseas travel and so there's a lot to choose from you can get all sorts of coverage you can again get it for a single trip where you're gone for a week or you can get it for i think as long as two years if you want the catch here at least with blue cross blue shield is that you already have to have an insurance policy of some kind yeah and then you purchase this travel medical insurance on top of that right Actually, something interesting about our just regular coverage that we have with Blue Cross Blue Shield here in the U.S. is we do have MedJet coverage with our insurance, and that actually covers us anywhere in the world. And what that means is if we were put in the hospital somewhere for whatever reason, they would fly us home to be put in a hospital here. So if you're just injured and you're not admitted to a hospital, it doesn't cover you for that purpose. Like when Sean broke his foot, it didn't fly us home with his broken foot. But if he had been admitted to the hospital, then we could have said, okay, we wanna 
we want to get to Alabama, and they will med jet fly you home. It just comes with our plan. So you might look into your insurance because you might have that as well. In the last 24 months, we've dealt with a lot, honestly. Yeah. Broken bones, surgery, ear infection, and now a brain tumor. Yeah. So you just never know what's going to happen. And especially when you're in a foreign country and you're probably maybe doing some activities that you wouldn't normally do at home that are a little risky. Um, a lot of these insurance companies that offer these medical um, travel medical insurance policies have riders on there where you can add on for kind of dangerous activity. So like skiing, you know, kayaking, uh, zip lining, scuba diving, all these things that are considered dangerous activities, a lot of these travel medical insurance plans will not cover unless you buy this rider to, to add on. And I actually clicked to add the rider on to ours just to see what the price increase would be, and it was like 100 bucks. So I think it's totally a smart thing to, to buy because it's really, if you're going to, to be out of the country for any significant length of time, it's really not that expensive. So that's it, guys. A quick discussion of at least four key points to know with regard to health insurance and travel. I would be remiss in concluding this video without thanking you so much for all of your comments and messages. I have been absolutely blown away by the response to my brain tumor announcement video. I had some really dark days in May, June, and July leading up to my brain tumor diagnosis. I didn't know what was going on. There were days when I just felt like I was dying. <laughs> and I know that sounds dramatic, but there were moments when I felt that way. Having a diagnosis and a good doctor and the medicine in hand has been such a relief in many ways. Now I know I'm dealing with a brain tumor and we know how to attack it and fight it. You know, it's just I, overwhelming how many people have sent, you know, well wishes and you know, said they're praying for you and praying for us and just wishing us the best and you know, just saying, "Hey, if you're ever here, stop by and see us" or whatever. Um, it's just been really cool to hear from everybody and we've heard a lot of people that have said hey I've had the exact same thing that you've got and I'm fine and you're gonna be okay and there's parts of it that's really gonna stink but you know you'll get through it and it'll be okay so that you know is I think uplifting to hear as well I remember one guy said we feel like we know you he said the internet can be a very personal medium and I completely agree with that and you guys are very special to us more so than you probably realize yeah. this community means a lot to us you mean a lot to us that just makes us so thankful for the audience that we have the friends that we have because we don't think of you guys as anything but our friends that we just haven't met yet. So if you ever see us out there, please don't hesitate to go up and say hello. Yeah, it means a lot to us that you guys watch and that you would that you would even want to say hello. So please do, it really brightens our day. Until next time, we're Sean and Christy. This is Long Long Honeymoon. Click that like button, subscribe, tell your friends about us. We've got tons of videos for you to watch. Go back and look at the archives. And we're still making videos. We're just not on the road at this exact moment. But, but we will be but soon. But we will be soon. <laughs> so stay tuned and be ready to watch Live Roll Down the Road because it's going to happen soon. soon. So. All right. Thanks, guys. Lo -lo -ho. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you disliked it, give it a thumbs down. Feel free to leave a comment, and of course, don't forget to subscribe. Speaking of needing health insurance when you're out of the country, I have to tell you this story. Back in 1992, I was teaching English in Czechoslovakia. Yes, back in the days when it was called Czechoslovakia. I was living in Bratislava, which is the capital of Slovakia and I got really sick. I'll never forget, I woke up one morning 
and I could barely walk. I had a skyrocketing fever, and I felt so weak. And I just met this fellow in my apartment building named Yuri Pekarovich. And it turns out that Yuri's dad was a doctor in the local hospital. And he took me over to the hospital, and they said, guess what? You got chicken pox. <laughs> and it all made sense because I was teaching children in elementary school, and they were getting chicken pox. And I had never had chicken pox when I was a kid. <laughs> so when you get chicken pox as an adult, it can actually be pretty intense. And since I was living alone in Czechoslovakia, they told me they would have to quarantine me. So they put me into the quarantine ward of the hospital, and I spent, I believe, the next three weeks in this hospital uh, recovering from chicken pox. Yeah, and also uh, some of my friends in Bratislava would bring me items of food that I wanted and they would leave on the ledge outside my window. This entire hospital had been constructed so there was a walkway outside the building and you could have visitors out there. So they're out there just like shivering, the freezing in the cold because it was like December in Slovakia. It was really cold. When I got back to the United States, my mother's a retired a public school teacher and guidance counselor. Mm -hmm. And at that time, at my age, I was still on her health insurance. Mm -hmm. Well, I ended up getting $100 for every day that I spent in the hospital there. And I spent about three weeks there. And in 1993, when I got this check, it was really a godsend <laughs> because uh, I was uh, pretty much a broke law student at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. And I was very thankful to have that health insurance there. Yeah.